Howdy folks, ARP Congo, back again for another episode of Simple Guide. Last episode we covered the Ryuzho, and in this episode we're going to be focusing on the Shikaku, the Tier 8 Tech Tree Japanese aircraft carrier. We're going to follow a similar pattern to last episode. We're going to talk about the equipment, what upgrade order, what modules you should take, commander skills, signals, and then we'll take it out into a random battle and see how I would play it. So with that starting, let's go with the upgrade order. So when you first get the Shikaku, the stock aircraft are tier 7. So the upgrade order is going to follow a very similar to the Ryuzho at tier 6 where you will take the torpedo bombers, dive bombers, then I would upgrade the uh, rocket aircraft, and then finally the hull. Uh, for upgrades, uh, slot 1, air groups modification 1, slot 2, aircraft engines modification 1, these two are always take these on every single carrier, slot 3, aerial torpedo modification 1, this increases the torque speed, um, you could take uh, torque mod 1 or attack aircraft mod one but in my opinion these two are very very situational and very rarely see use um and then secondary well just don't you're not a graf zeppelin you're not a man for the rig dolphin just don't take them uh for the fourth slot torpedo mo bomber modification two again increase the torpedo bomber hp now for the fifth slot i have concealment systems now this is a personal preference. Uh, you could take Concealment Expert or Flight Control Modification 1. Uh, both of these are good. Uh, I take Concealment Expert. This drops my concealment down to a comfortable 11.2 kilometers. This means I can move my carrier closer to the front lines and reduce the turnaround time. Um, if you don't move your carrier or you don't move it very close and you have a harder time with keeping your planes alive, or you're just starting out, then the flight control module is probably going to be a better. This gives you more reduction in restoration time and two more uh, aircraft in each squadron. Uh, but for more experienced players or players who want to play a little more closer, Concealment Expert is nice. For the commander skills, uh, basic 13 points, uh, air supremacy, extra restoration time. For the two-point skill... Um, I have improved engines. Uh, I feel improved engines is incredibly useful. That squadron speed lets you get across the map just so much faster, especially with the Japanese carriers and their planes are so much faster. However, if you want to take Torpedo Bomber first, you can. Um, in the end, you will take both of these skills because both of these skills are so useful on Japanese carriers. Um, so whether you have an issue with that longer arming distance that the Japanese torpedo bombers have, then you might consider taking torpedo bomber first to reduce that. If you don't have an issue with it, or you're, you're semi-competent uh, without it, then taking the extra plane speed is just so much helpful. Uh, then aircraft armor reduces AA damage. Proximity Fuse, your torps do more damage when they hit the Torpedo Protection of Battleships and some cruisers. And then Survivability Expert. Basic 15 points right there, those. And then uh, Torpedo Bomber, 15 points right there. Uh, you'll come back and take whichever one of these two you didn't take the first time. That's your 15 points. And for the remaining points, it's very much personal opinion. I have enhanced reactions, and for my last points, I will take um, Search and Destroy and Improved Engine Boost. If you don't use your fighters for actively countering the enemy carrier, or in the Tier 8 bracket, where you face a lot, you get up tiered a lot in Tier 8. So you face Tier 10s a lot, and you might get carrier sniped, in which the enemy carrier will spot you for his battleships and get you killed. So this... These two skills, Search and Destroy, Enhanced Reactions, those are, are good for shooting down the fighter spotting you or shooting down the aircraft that are spotting you. Or just, it, it helps a lot with catching people, catching the enemy carrier with his strike aircraft. If you don't use your fighters a lot for shooting down aircraft and more for, uh, for spotting, then taking um, Site Stabilization and probably... 
patrol group's leader or the extra heal, the repair specialist, will probably do you better. Um, and then you can take one of the one points. Improved engine boosts, super useful. You can boost longer. Um, engine techie is also very nice. Just reduces the cooldown. Or last gasp is also nice. Uh, this is more useful on your uh, dive bombers and rockets. Since if we look, they only have three strike groups. Whereas your torpedo bombers have five. 2x10. Um, so... Last Gasp is useful. On the Haku, at tier 10, it's not as good because you have waves of 4 as opposed to waves of 3. Um, so it, it kind of loses value. But it, it's the last remaining points are more personal preference. If you want to fighter, use your fighters more as an aggressive, shooting down the enemy, encountering them. Or if you just want site stabilization to just aim your torpedoes, aim your rockets, aim your dive bombers faster, then that option is there. For the signals, I have uh, Flood Chance. Again, torpedoes, main focus, Flood Chance, very helpful. Uh, so at tier 8, your torpedo bombers get a heal. Uh, so the heal flag is actually very useful in keeping your planes alive a little bit longer when you're pushing through some of that tough AA, especially when you get up tier to tier 10. Being able to push through some of that harder AA is very helpful and the heal flag just lets you push through a little bit more uh speed flag your fast carrier going a little faster just helps you keep your distance and you can push more close or fall back faster from the front lines if a flank starts to collapse or if you get caught out you might be able to run away from some ships um reload time of consumables faster fighter planes faster engine boost it's pretty straightforward and then i have the aa flag this just boosts up my respectable AA to just a little bit more, maybe clip a few more planes, shoot down a few more. It, it's a nice benefit. And then for the camouflage, use whatever you want. I happen to have the perma camouflage, so I'm going to be using that. So, that is how I would set up the Haku, it, or the Shikaku. Um, the commander skills, very similar to what you'll run on the Haku, um, for the most part. So if you're going through this line and you plan to move it up, most of the skills you take on the Shikaku, like say Slavization, you know, the basic 15 points are going to be used on the Haku as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and head into a random battle. And we get straight in. Um, so tier 8s tend to get up tiered a lot to tier 10. It's very common, so we'll see if, uh, if we are. And just like that, we're up tiered to tier 10. Um, so... We're against tier 10 matchmaking. We're against a Kaga, which kind of hurts. Uh, Kaga has a lot of aircraft, so she'll have way better endurance than us. Um, in terms of big AA threats, Minotaur is kind of scary. Uh, Nevsky with the defensive could be nasty. Seattle with the defensive could be nasty. Uh, Benson, I'm not too scared about. Adigo, Mines, meh. The battleships, Georgia is going to be a bit scary. Uh, Kerfirst, uh, Kerfirst Yamato is, is not scary. They, they have fairly weak AA, even for tier 10s. Soyuz is a, can be pretty strong at the beginning, but as he gets AE Chief Spam, he'll, he'll lose some of that, and, and it's not terrible. Um, yeah, and that, and then Gascon is, is pretty irrelevant. So we have an Asashio. Go ahead and head out towards Seaside. Uh, our destroyer spawned on A, so we'll take a quick little peek over at C, and then we'll probably fly over to A side and drop our Asashio fighters. Because uh, he is our only destroyer. It is a single destroyer game in this case. So we do want to keep our destroyer alive. And we actually plane spotted, which means the enemy Kaga is probably here. And since we can't see the, tor the planes, I'm going to assume it's probably torpedo bombers. And he's probably somewhere on the edge there uh oh yeah, we found the minotaur that's that's not good oh and the nevsky oh oh no no so that is that is the worst case scenario of what we want to find first and there george is over there too so c is c is gonna be a very very hard flank for us to do anything. I'm actually just going to move my carrier towards A side because I'm not going to be able to strike any of those ships over there. Minotaur, Nevsky, Georgia, that it's just not happening. Um, Kerfirst Yamato is a bit better here. In fact, we actually found their Benson. 
I am plane spotted, so it looks like the... Yep. And he is going for a carrier snipe. I'm gonna drop my fighters. Fuck my priority sector. I'm gonna hard turn. And that should shoot down all those aircraft. We're getting shot at by the enemy battleships. And, and this is kind of the issue when you're up tier 2, tier 10, is that that happens. Where the enemy carrier spots you, and then the enemy battleships try to snipe you. Um, and in that sense, I, I kind of knew he was coming to do it, because uh, my planes were spotted, and I couldn't see the planes that were spotting them. So it had to have been the Kaga Torpedo Bombers, because they're super sneaky. Um... We were able to shoot down all of his aircraft, and he got a little bit of chip damage on us, but it didn't kill us, and we're still floating, and we're moving away. And that Benson is pushed back into A, and I'm going to make my way over towards my friendly ships, because as you can see right there at G8, the Kaga is bringing her torpedo bombers again, probably to try and snipe me again, or light me up at least. Um, so we don't want that. It looks like that Benson is actually going to ground on the beach there. And in fact, he did. I'm going to drop that there. It's anticipating that he's going to reverse. And I'm going to try to circle back around. And drop him from the side. Oh, and he's actually just fully reversed out. Interesting. Oh, there's a mines over there. Or there's a Seattle over there. There's a mines in B, so I think I'm gonna go strike him. He looks like to be the most isolated target. There's a Seattle protecting the curve first and the Soyuz. The Yamato's a bit isolated, so we might go strike him next. They got a big old clump of battleships at A, but they're not really pushing, which is kind of an issue. And then the Kaga is striking our battleships over at sea, which you can't really do anything about. Not as long as the Minotaur and the Georgia are over there and the Nevsky either. This mines. He's back against an island. He's not moving. Pushed himself against an island. He's not moving. He's stationary. He's a very easy target for us. There we go. Don't sit. We'll take the dive bombers out and go hit him again because he's not going to get very far. first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna come from this side on a side and I'm gonna swing around and hit the mines and beat if he's reversing I'll catch him if he's not reversing and he's actually moving forward he's gonna push forward into our Riga and our Colbert which is what I want and if he stays there, I'm just going to bomb him and maybe kill him out. He doesn't have any support, and he's pushed against an island. The Amato's too far away, and so is the Seattle. Unfortunately, RNG was not with us that time. We only got the one Citadel. But he's got such little health that I might try and just torp him in the, in the rear from the A side. Well, actually, he's pushing. Oh, he's pushing into our Riga, so he should be dead. Yep, and there we go. He's dead. He was forced to push out, otherwise I'd come back and strike him again. He pushed out into our Riga and a cold bear, and they just melted him. 
go over here and see if I can strike that Yammy with a Soyuz. Soyuz is pretty low. I might want to go try and kill her. I was considering pre-dropping there a second wave and trying to strike the, um, the Soyuz because the Soyuz is super low. Uh, but in this case, I'm actually going to hold the wave and I'm going to actually strike the Yamato because I think my team should be able to kill the um, Soyuz. Found the Benson. He's actually pushing over there. That's fine. on him. Let's see if he repairs it. And he did in fact repair the single flood right there. Oh, he didn't. I'm aiming for the nose of the Yamato. Because uh, I thought she repped the single flood, but in fact she didn't. Uh, so she's letting it tick. She might actually just repair it there. If she did, I'm going to go for the stern and try and get a flood on her rear. Uh, if she did repair the single flood, then maybe that will set another flood. If she didn't, then maybe I can get a double flood. Uh, let's see. Her number still tick? No. So she did, in fact, repair the flood. Uh, so we know. Uh, Yama, DPC, just let my team know that the Yamato was used to repair party. So now, uh, our... Cleveland or maybe our Baltimore can set a perma fire and punish her for not having it. Uh, this is not kill that uh, Soyuz yet, so we might go strike the Soyuz next. Oh, we just lost the laddie. That's not good. There we go. Looks like the Colbert is burning down the Soyuz. not really doing a lot of damage, so I'm just gonna ensure that the Soyuz goes down. I'm just gonna strike her. Make sure she goes down. Because we need, we need to get some of these, these ships off the board. Uh, the Soyuz actually just killed our uh, player. That's unfortunate. Alright. She's dead. That's fine. Another flood on the uh, Yamato. Uh, I can't really go strike these the the cruisers in the middle because uh, it's Minotaur, Georgia, uh, Adigo. I'm not really gonna get much, but kind of need to stop them. Um, they're kind of just rolling over my team at the moment. Our destroyer is doing. I'm not quite sure what. He's trying to cloak the Gascon or the Yamato. I'm not sure. There we go. Did manage to hit the Minotaur with a bomb, but I mean, you you can see that none of those planes survived. All six of them died before. Uh, before they, they returned. None of them came back. Five of them died uh, before the strike. One got the strike off, but he died before. So you can see that just there's way too much concentrated AA over there. Like, I, I can't actually strike it. Um, but I kind of have to, because if I don't, my rig is giving flat, perfect broadside to the enemy Minotaur, which is not good. Uh, save them. Quite maneuverable. Uh, as a cruiser, the Minotaur is actually very maneuverable. And he's just gonna probably yolo rush my uh, three gun. There's not a whole lot I can do about it. Unless we can delete him here. Maybe. 
Oh. Well, he did. Problem is, is that the Georgia has pushed through the Central Islands is now rushing me. And she's mostly full health. Uh, which is a bit problematic to say the least. Because uh, the only one left alive is the Azashia. On my team. And she is currently chasing the destroyer in our. or the battleships in our spawn. Um, so, yeah. Unfortunately, this one looks like it's probably gonna be a loss to. Um, unfortunately, as a bottom tier carrier, there's only so much you can do um, into tier 10 matchmaking, especially this kind of matchmaking. It's very hostile AA. You really have to pick your targets, or you're going to end up deplaying super quickly. And even, even preserving my planes fairly well, you can see I'm out of torpedo bombers. These are the last of my dive bombers. Um, it, it's just, it's super hostile AA. killed me. Let me get the last strikes on this Georgia. Set a fire. It's not a sticky fire. I think she still has her uh, her DPC. Yep, and there she just used it. So these won't set a fire, but uh, we'll let you damage. And we didn't even get the strike off. Yeah, you, you can see just just a Georgia and an Attico just melt your planes. Georgia has very high AA. It's incredibly incredibly powerful and that was that was unfortunately just really bad mage making for shikaku and in you know as a bottom tier carrier into to tier 10 matchmaking some very high aa ships it it just you know unfortunately that's that's kind of how it is at tier 8 uh you get up tiered into tier 10 a lot and this is what happens and you just have to make the best of it so 104k damage um we did shoot down quite a bit of the kagas planes um we did get top of the team which is nice that's always a that's always a feels good uh i mean i guess that also kind of shows you the my team <laughs> top of the team is a bottom tier aircraft carrier so unfortunate but it is what it is and uh yeah so that was the shikaku uh in the, uh, in the next episode, we will be looking at the Hakuru, which is the Tier 10 Japanese aircraft carrier, and the final in this kind of tech tree carrier showcase. So, until then, I'll see you next time.